Bedford during the Cold War, when NATO aircraft of different types and nationalities were a familiar sight. Upper Hayford was one of the largest US Air Force bases in Europe at the time. It housed the bombers that carried NATO's intermediate range nuclear weapons. Before that, it had been home to American troops who had arrived in Vista in the 50s. Ultimately, there was a US presence for more than four decades. Today, parts of the site are protected as scheduled monuments. It's one of the oldest bases in the world, more than a hundred years of history. And despite the secrecy surrounding it, movie producers were granted special access to use it as a location for the Bond film Octopussy in the 1980s. Where can I find the base commander, sir? So, given its links to 007, we thought we'd explore James Bond style. My wingman for the day is Don Tog. He's been running tours of the site for the last two decades. This is one of a number of cars used for driving experiences on this private site, away from public roads. The old base is more than a thousand acres. There's so much to explore, and the first stop is a real treat. Hey, the echo. Some door. Oh, we got that. Oh, it's really dark in here. Gosh, well, listen to the echo. You can do the light switch. Let me just. Uh... opening up one of the aircraft shelters. F-111s were permanently armed and located in quick reaction alert areas like this one. This is where the planes were kept on readiness for uh, takeoff of the mission. So they were on standby, Stand on complete alert. Yes. This is where they were, yes. the doors would open and they'd yes. be set off. Yes. And the artwork is great on the back there. What's that? That is the depiction of the squadron. Side. Roll of the dice, they called them, the 55th Squadron. Yeah. So that's depicting the pointing 55th, they called them. This area has continued to attract Hollywood A-listers. The owners of the site get regular requests from producers. One of the latest movies filmed here was Wonder Woman. It's a big fighting scene in which they use most of the uh, quick response area, this area, use some of the hangars. She had a, a massive fight defending the, and saving the world at the very end of the movie. So yes, it was the it saved the world uh, scene. You can see why movie producers love this place. It feels like stepping back in time. It was once completely off limits and for those with only the highest security clearance. But today the old command centre is completely abandoned. Okay, you do the olive. During the Cold War, NATO began to improve the strength of aircraft shelters and battle command centres to ensure survival in the event of a Soviet strike, so that they would be able to mount a counter-attack. And Don has got us special access to a part of the site that's rarely opened back up, the War Readiness Complex, complete with special decontamination areas for if there was a chemical attack. Take everything off. Take it and put it in this sealed bin here. The next port call is a shell. So this is the war readiness room, the nerve centre of the base here during the Cold War. And you can just imagine, can't you, this room being full and all these phones being manned. The details on the walls tell us about where the aircraft were. They were always on high alert. And rumour has it that many of these phones had a direct line to the Pentagon and even the White House. Many businesses coexist here and some of them attract people with a special connection to its past. So you get lots of American pilots that come along um, that used to fly from here and are keen to drive their old runway again. I mean, it's just lovely just to see the expressions and what enjoyment it brings for them. There are plans for a heritage centre on the site so more can learn of its top secret past, allowing its stories to live on into the future. Sean Grosjek, Forces News, at the old RAF Upper Hayford base in Vista. Well, it's time now for the weather across the